Now that you're totally familiar with the unified process, let's actually jump into UML and talk about the diagrams themselves. We've mentioned that UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. Let's break down each of these words into more detail. Unified means that the language itself is standardized. This could apply to, for example, a major airline reservation system or something as simple as playing board games. Modeling means we're making diagrams. This you already knew about. And language means that it's a standardized communication system, like I said, between many different players, teams, and skill sets. You'll often find UML used to communicate between tech teams, business, all sorts of different teams within a company. And we even use UML here at Open Classrooms to do the same thing. For example, our tech team makes a ton of UML diagrams and shows them to different people in the company to make sure that we actually build products that are relevant for everyone. UML offers 14 different types of diagrams. 14 might seem like a lot, and you actually don't need to make all 14 for every project. In fact, there are even two different categories of UML diagrams. The first category involves system behaviors. Here are the seven that fall into the category of system behaviors. Activity diagrams, communication diagrams, interaction overview diagrams, sequence diagrams, state diagrams, timing diagrams, and use case diagrams. In this course, we'll take a look at the last item in that list, a use case diagram. Regardless though, all of the diagrams in this category revolve around behaviors. So we can actually make these sorts of diagrams with no programming involved. The second category of UML diagrams is going to dive more into technical detail. So if you're a developer, you're actually gonna hang out more in this list of seven other UML diagrams. Class diagrams, component diagrams, composite structure diagrams, deployment diagrams, object diagrams, package diagrams, and profile diagrams. Now at this point, you have a list of 14 diagrams with almost no context about what any of them actually do. This is where we can look back at the unified process, the methodology that we studied in the last chapter, for a little bit of guidance on when to make each diagram and what purpose it might serve. For example, for none of your projects are you going to make actually all 14 diagrams, unless you go hardcore into UML. Like I said, in this course, we'll check out one type of diagram from each category. And once you see how each type of diagram can work, you'll be much better equipped to make any type of UML diagram going forward.